3.3.3, all stakeholders voting. Prior to an all stakeholder voting event, the foundation will announce detailed rules such as voting day, voting period, and minimum participation rate of each stakeholder category. Because all of the stakeholder statuses are managed on the VeChain Thor blockchain, on the voting day, stakeholders with an active status in any of the three categories are eligible to cast their votes via the VVote platform. Their votes will be counted towards the voting authority in the corresponding stakeholder category. In addition, for any voting event to be considered as effective and not to be manipulated by a small percentage of stakeholders, the participant rate of each stakeholder category at the end of the voting period needs to be above a predefined threshold according to the voting announcement. If the participation rate does not meet the minimum requirement in one stakeholder category, the voting authority of that category will be allocated to the higher stakeholder category or categories proportionally. If there are not enough authority masternode holders participating in the voting, its voting authority will be allocated to the steering committee. However, if none of the stakeholder categories meets the minimum participation requirement, a new voting event would be initiated. To ensure the efficiency of governance at the early stage of the platform, the steering committee reserves the right to make the decision among the steering committee members if the voting event fails twice in a row. New Board of Steering Committee Election According to the Foundation Governance Charter, the term for the steering committee is two years. Therefore, the election of the new Board of Steering Committee will happen every two years from the launch of the VeChain Thor blockchain mainnet. The nomination committee, with assistance from the administrative unit, will announce the detailed rules and timeline of the whole election process in advance. The existing members of the steering committee are by default considered as candidates for the new board. The nomination committee will nominate candidates based on the size of the steering committee. In addition, the nomination committee will review and assess the applications received from public and add qualified applicants as candidates. In case that the number of qualified candidates exceeds twice the proposed number of the new board, a preliminary all stakeholder voting will be conducted to shrink the number of qualified candidates from the public applications. Please see section 4.2.3 for more detailed rules. A final shortlist will be announced by the nomination committee before the final election. The new Board of Steering Committee should be elected by all eligible stakeholders with voting authority two months before the term of the existing board ends. The nominees will be ranked by number of votes and the membership will be granted to the candidates with the highest number of votes based on predetermined board size and composition rule. The results of the election will be announced by the nomination committee within 48 hours of ballot end time. 3.4 the Board of Steering Committee. The Steering Committee is the governing body of the VeChain Foundation. They define the important strategies and select functional committee chairs to oversee the operation of the Foundation. Designed for visibility, inclusiveness, transparency, and efficiency, the Foundation will ensure the development, innovation, coordination, and advancement of the VeChain Thor blockchain ecosystem. The board believes that all committee members represent the balanced interest of the multiple stakeholders as a whole. The board represents the VeChain Thor blockchain stakeholders' interest in long-term development of the technical infrastructure, business expansion, and VET value enhancement. The board also recognizes the important role the foundation plays in the blockchain ecosystem and the importance of providing active governance designed to ensure the safety and soundness of the operations within the VeChain Thor blockchain. The board is responsible for establishing the general oversight and framework, including the design and operating rules of the blockchain intended to achieve these goals. The board's principal functions are to, one, propose and organize all stakeholder voting events for fundamental issues of the VeChain Thor blockchain, two, review, approve, and monitor the foundation's major strategic, technical, financial, and business activities, three, review, modify, and approve the governance principles of the foundation. Number four, review, approve, and monitor the foundation's annual budget, financial status, including VET holdings, use of proceeds, and its major transactions. Five, review, approve, and monitor the procedure of nomination and election of the steering committee members, functional committee chairs, and the general secretary of the foundation. And six, 
review, approve, and monitor the operation model of VTHO, which is the operating cost basis of the VeChain Thor blockchain, and valuation model of VET. The board is elected by the stakeholders with voting authority for their terms, and it is composed of representatives from the VeChain Foundation, authority master node holders, developers, enterprise users, business users, as well as independent members. The board meets at least once a quarter, led by the General Secretary of the Steering Committee. For more details about composition, criteria, termination of the Steering Committee, please see the VeChain Foundation Governance Charter, which is a link you can click through on the PDF for the white paper. The current Steering Committee member profiles can be found on the VeChain Foundation website, which is also a link you can click through on the VeChain white paper PDF. 3.5 Advisory Board. In addition to the steering committee, the Foundation seeks members from diverse professional backgrounds with a broad spectrum of expertise to serve on the Advisory Board, which will provide industry insights and advice to assist the steering committee. Members of the Advisory Board, in a predetermined order, serve as standby members for members of the steering committee in the case of termination or voluntary leave of any existing board members during the current term. The current advisory board members can be found on the VeChain Foundation website. 3.6 Functional Committees The board has established the following committees Technical, Operational, Public Relations, Regulation, Compensation, and Nomination. Each of the committees should be chaired by one of the Board of Steering Committee members or advisory board members and include key managers of the functional units as members. The Compensation and Nomination Committee should be chaired by an independent member of the Board of Steering Committee or a member of the Advisory Board. Committee assignments and the designation of committee chairs should be based on the member's knowledge, interests, and areas of expertise. The Board agenda shall include regular reports from the chairs of each of its committees on their proceedings and deliberations. The committee shall bring to the board for consideration those matters and decisions which the committee judges to be of special significance. For the introduction of functional committees, please see the VeChain Foundation Governance Charter, which you can find the link on the white paper PDF. 3.7 Authority Master Node Management. 3.7.1 What is an Authority Master Node? The VeChain Thor blockchain uses a proof of authority or POA consensus in which each transaction is validated by authority masternodes or AM. However, the VeChain Thor blockchain node program is open source, which that is a link you can click through on the PDF white paper, which means it does not require any permission to synchronize the full ledger of VeChain Thor blockchain and initiate transactions on it. An AM is a network-connected server running the VeChain Thor full node program, which keeps a complete copy of the blockchain. Additionally, authority masternodes are the full nodes authorized via an on-chain whitelist to validate and produce blocks of the VeChain Thor blockchain. The whitelist of authority masternodes is managed through the authority built-in smart contract, which requires multi-signature authorization of the VeChain steering committee members to make any modification. All AM holders must do the following. A, be vetted to ensure that they have legitimate identity. B, hold 25 million VETs as collateral. And C, run and manage a server with a certain guaranteed level of performance and availability. More importantly, in addition to those minimum qualifications, AM holders are responsible for actively contributing to the VeChain ecosystem in their own fields. As an incentive to AMs for maintaining the integrity of the blockchain, contributing to the VeChain ecosystem, and participating in the platform governance, the network rewards the AMs with VTHO tokens, which is a native VIP 180 token, representing the transaction fees of the VeChain Thor blockchain. In each block, 30% of the VTHOs consumed by the transactions are paid out to the AM that produces the block. The other 70% of VTHOs are burned. On the VeChain Thor blockchain, authority masternodes do not compete to produce blocks. Rather, the block producer is selected by a random algorithm. 
This helps solve one of the key concerns from enterprises to run a consensus node on a public blockchain regarding computing power slash energy consumption. The POA consensus consumes far less energy than proof of work. In addition, authority nodes are entitled to the highest weight per vote in all stakeholders voting based on the VeChain governance model, which you can find a link on the PDF white paper. Collectively, AMs hold a total of 40% of the total voting authority. The design of the POA consensus and authority masternodes lies at the center of the VeChain governance model. Unlike most public blockchains on the market, the VeChain AM holders are subject to strict Know Your Customer or KYC verification, and the reputation is part of the stake, in addition to the financial collateral. The VeChain Foundation conducts strict identity verification and hold AMs accountable for their activities and obligations to the ecosystem. 3.7.2 How are the AMs managed? The Foundation seeks corporates and individuals that have aligned interests and are able to contribute to the growth of the VeChain ecosystem to apply to be AM holders, which may include but are not limited to the following roles. Enterprise users, blockchain development teams, business and technical development partners, community contributors, academic research partners. Corporates or individuals can apply to become an e rephrase. Corporates or individuals can apply to become an AM holder after going through the KYC process and obtaining a VVID in the VeChain portal, which you can find that link on the white paper PDF. The VeChain Foundation Operation Team and its Steering Committee review the applications based on a set of selection criteria and our approved applicants are eligible to become Authority Masternode holders. The criteria covers both quantitative basic requirements and the ability to contribute to the ecosystem. On page 26 of the VeChain white paper PDF, you will find figure 3.7.2, the Authority Masternode Application Process. As the foundation of the VeChain Thor blockchain, AM holders must maintain the security and availability of the Authority Masternode as well as contribute to the VeChain ecosystem. In order to measure the performance of AM holders, VeChain Foundation Operation Team continuously monitors metrics relating to Authority Masternode performance and VeChain ecosystem contribution. Failure to meet the requirements may result in the AM holder being disqualified. For more details on the AM management lifecycle, please refer to the Authority Masternode Handbook, which you can find a link on the VeChain white paper PDF. 3.7.3 .3, Authority Masternode Identity Disclosure It has always been the VeChain Foundation's goal to provide the community with transparency. The proof of authority consensus relies on the public reputation of the node holders on the other side, we all witnessed the fallout of Libra Association, where enterprises chose to withdraw as masternodes due to regulatory ambiguity. Though the VeChain Thor blockchain was launched in June 2018, our AM holders, especially enterprise holders, share the same perspective and some of them would prefer to keep their identities and activities on the blockchain from the public. However, the VeChain Foundation and its steering committee, who is elected by the stakeholders with voting authority, see section 3.2 for more information, apply strict identity verification and assessment during the onboarding process to ensure the legality of AM holders' identities and AM holders are able to make contributions to the VeChain ecosystem. For the stability of the VeChain ecosystem at its early stage, we understand that while AM holders are pioneers and innovators in their own fields to join a public blockchain network for a distributed business ecosystem, many of them want to spend more time to explore and gain more clarity from both technical and regulatory perspectives. Therefore, during the trial phase of the VeChain Authority Masternode program, the Foundation has decided that it would be at the AM holder's discretion to disclose the status as an Authority Masternode holder to the public. New Authority Masternode applicants that are willing to disclose the status will be favored in the onboarding assessment. As the AM program matures, the VeChain Foundation aims to work closely with the AM holders to provide more transparency. 3.8 Financial Management From a financial perspective, the VeChain Foundation's goal is to maintain a healthy financial status to support the advancement of VeChain blockchain technologies and the sustainable development of the VeChain ecosystem. 
The VeChain Foundation set up a full-time financial management team to efficiently manage the finances and economic resources of the organization. The team is responsible for financial planning, accounting, compliance, and financial control to aid the management in better decision making. The financial management team periodically reports the financial status and planning to the steering committee. 3.8.1 Funding Sources As a nonprofit organization, the VeChain Foundation does not distribute profits or dividends to the founding team, controllers, or shareholders in the foundation. However, the foundation will actively seek income to fund the sustainable development of the project. The income subtracted the operational expenditure will all be allocated to the cause of the ecosystem development. According to VeChain Foundation's operation model since inception, we have established several income streams to maintain a healthy financial status and support the long-term development of the VeChain ecosystem. Asset Management and Investment VeChain Foundation allocates about 10% of its capital to further invest in innovative projects on the VeChain Thor blockchain that create value to the ecosystem. The Foundation injects a portion of the funds into the VeChain Ecosystem Fund, which is a joint effort with reputable venture capitals in both blockchain and traditional sectors to further expand the development of the VeChain Ecosystem. In addition, the Foundation hires professional third-party service providers to manage its proceeds in fiat and cryptocurrencies such as BTC and ETH to mitigate the risk of market volatility and enjoy the appreciation of unused assets. The gain from the investment and asset management will be reused to fund the technology advancement and ecosystem development. Professional Services the VeChain Foundation, as the key enabler of the ecosystem, sometimes receive payment in fiat or digital assets for the services provided. For example, the project management team in the foundation provides consulting or development services to traditional enterprises to ease the process of developing, building, maintaining, and generally transforming their businesses by using the blockchain technologies provided by VeChain. The Foundation experts also provide paid professional trainings to traditional enterprises, industrial associations, and government agencies. As blockchain technology becomes more mainstream, the need to understand blockchain technology and use cases will significantly increase. Service or Solution Packages with VTHO Support From the long-term perspective, as the VeChain economic model reaches its equilibrium, the VeChain Foundation will receive income for the VTHO generated from its VET reserve. The two-token economic model, which is a link you can click through on the white paper, of the VeChain Thor blockchain is designed to detach the costs of using the blockchain with the market volatility. VET holders have equal rights to receive VTHO, which can be used to conduct transfer and smart contract transactions on the VeChain Thor blockchain. Thanks to the economic model design, many developers and enterprise users in the VeChain ecosystem purchase VET on the open market to generate VTHO for their applications or directly purchase VTHO on the market. However, due to the ambiguity of the cryptocurrency regulations and standards, in the near future, some of the enterprises will still opt to pay an intermediary or third party on a lump sum or subscription basis so that the third party can take care of the VTHO as part of their service or solution packages by utilizing the fee delegation feature on the VeChain Thor blockchain.